Alright, so obviously I can't teleport to raids directly yet because I don't have the tablet from raids. So the fastest way I can get there for now is Xerx Talisman to the center of town or center of the island and then run a little bit south and there should be a mining cart right here. This method to getting to raids is probably going to be short term because the tablet that can teleport me directly to raids with the Xerx Talisman is only a 1 in 5 drop from raids regardless of points. So even if I butcher my first few raids, I should still have a really good chance to get the Xerx Tablet. So I am collecting a bunch of bronze axes right now for raids. I'm going to need about 1500 of them because yeah, we are going for 1500 raids. So I'm trying to bring one bronze axe each raid. I'll explain more about it uh, during the gear setup, but pest control is the best place to buy bronze axes that I could think of. I got a few other smaller preparatory things to do before I can actually start raiding, such as making stamina potions and getting some uh, brews. I got about 1200 MLA saved up, so that should be at least 300 stamina for doses. I'm gonna get a low moral with chemistry. Let's assume I use about two full stamina potions of raid. That's about 150 raids right there. So it's a good start. It's a good thing I've been going hard as hell with the farming because I actually forgot I need to get a little bit higher herbler so I can make some serotonin brews because it's at 81. So I have enough to cover 80, which is perfect because I can uh, easily use Green Man's Ale to infinitely boost myself to 81 and make the serotonin brews. Two years ago on this account, I did get like a serotonin brew drop or two. So I still have some. So that's enough for today, I guess. Okay, so this is going to be my starting setup for now. Nothing too crazy, you know, not the best gear, but adequate melee switches, adequate mace switches here, adequate range switches. And it's exactly all the stuff that uh, I set up to get on phase one. You might be asking me, like, why not Sav Emulet? Well, the thing is, my rules doesn't allow me to, to use an ult to hold my raid. Some raids that I end up doing isn't going to have skeletons in it, so... Good amount of supplies though. Three stamina's. I might just limit down to two. We'll see. For now we'll start with three just because I don't really know how fast I can do this raid. But yeah, this is the start for now. Bronze Axe just for if I get muted out early. But anyways, let's begin. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. In this episode, I want to talk about the scouting uh, procedure. You know, figure out what type of raids I can do and what type of raids I can't do. So... When initially planning the series, I realized that with this stat and gear, there's definitely going to be some type of raids that is not going to be possible. And the types of raids that are not possible, I can tell you right now, is raids that doesn't have overloads and enhances, which means no Mutadal and Tecton. And also raids that has Vespula before I get per enhances or overloads. So those two types of raids is not uh, doable at the moment and probably won't be doable until I can A, make my own overload pluses and B, I have better magic gear to actually tackle early Fespilas. Jagdix recently buffed the Thieving Room to give it more points. It used to only give like 500 or something for 5 minutes of work so it was so bad but now it's like over 3000 points from what I can see and about the same amount of time that it takes. For the first raid, I got myself a 4 boss 2 skeleton room raid, which is the most common type of raids. So I got Skeleton Mages, Mining Room, Vasa, and Tecton for the bosses, and for skilling was Thieving and Crabs. Out of all 6 challenges outside from Ulm, Vasa and Tecton to me are the ones that I'm uh, concerned about. So this is going to be quite interesting. Fossa is one of the most difficult bosses in raids because of its very tricky mechanics that if you don't deal with the boss fast enough, you'll start losing a ton of resources. So ideally, I want to kill this boss within two rotations. Two rotations means two of his special attack where he summons you to the middle and you're forced to take a magic damage that is the equivalent of your current HP minus five. But no matter what though, when you get teleported, you have to brew up and that means you have to renew your range potion, renew your attack and strain potion, all of that because you have to melee the crystals, you have to range the boss. And also you do a lot of running, so it drains your stamina. If it becomes a very dragged out fight, you're going to basically drain all your supplies 
and you won't have any supplies left for the other bosses. That was something I was scared of because what if it takes me too long with this setup? I just don't get enough DPS. But fortunately for me, it seems that with the blowpipe and eco high, as long as I'm maximizing uh, every available, you know, second to attack the boss and attack the crystals properly, uh, I seem to be able to cover myself, you know, just enough time before it starts reducing my supplies like crazy. Man. Jesus, it's so hard to hit. Please, crossbow. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Crossbow. Yes. Let's go. We did it. That was nice. Man, that was rough, dude. That is pretty rough. So Tekton is another boss that I'm worried about, mainly because it might take a very long time to kill and really slowing down my rates. I'm not worried about the supplies because it's fairly easy to dodge his attacks once you learn how to do it properly. So my main issue is time. And luckily, Jagex nerfed Tekton's defense by 30% recently, so that's like having a Warhammer spec landed every time before the fight even starts, so that's going to help a lot. So the method that I'm using to fight Tekton is the flinching method or the sidestep method. You can tell by the way that I'm dodging the attack and then immediately attacking the boss as soon as the boss finishes his attack. And it all happens in 1.8 second cycle of dodging, going into the boss, dodging, going to the boss, repeatedly. You can learn more about the methods in detail if you just YouTube Wooks' Soul Race Guy or Sing Soul Race Guy. They both cover it. So my best weapon right now is either using a Warhammer for the flinch or kiting with the Samraki and Hasta, and it wasn't too bad. I've actually killed the boss within only, I would say, 3 minutes or so. So the 30% nerf in his defense helped tremendously. So I'm glad I'm actually able to kill Tekton uh, within 5 minutes or less, so that's really good. So after clearing all the rooms, I managed to keep all the brutes I brought in from raids. I did use the bats that I got from the demon room for places like Fossa and stuff, so I was able to... Uh, retain my bruise all the way to the end so i actually think i can no prep ohm even with the setup because i do have seven brews i have three restores i have the overload and the prayer enhance so in terms of supplies i'm looking really good and the question of whether or not i can no prep it is we'll find out right we'll, we'll have to do the own first but if i can pull it off then going forward i'll try to do more no preps with this setup and see just how consistent I can do it. Because it will be awesome if I can consistently no prep this with the setup. Because it will save me a good amount of time. So the own fight is probably one of my most confident parts about the whole raiding process. Just because every single time you do a raid, there's always own. So out of every other boss in the raids, own is definitely my most experience. So I can tell you right off the bat that in terms of food management and like prayer management i should be okay just because i know a lot of the tactics you know the most advanced tactics available that i can use to mitigate a ton of damage but the only thing i can't really mitigate no matter how experienced you are is the fact that this own fight is probably going to take several minutes longer to do than the own fight with you know max setup right let's say with max setup i'm getting like 10 minute own kills or 11 minutes with this gear setup, there's no way in hell I'm getting even close to that. I'm probably going to have to spend like an extra 3 minutes, probably, 2 to 3 minutes to do the same ohm kill. So yeah, that's 2 to 3 minutes of running around, and yeah, that's a lot of stamina. So I have to really be careful with how I want to manage my staminas, because I can't really bring 4 staminas, because then it'll sacrifice you know a lot of other inventory space. So right now, I need to make sure I can actually do the entire raid with three Staminas. And I think it should just be enough. You know, with my experience, I should be able to cover it. I'm going to be listing some of the techniques that I use to solo Ohm. I would love to explain it in detail, but it would take hours. So I recommend you check out Sync's Solo Raids Guide if you want to learn in-depth of all these strategies. So the strategies that I typically use is called Mage Hand Running when I'm dealing with Mage Hand. 4 to 1 when I'm dealing with melee hand, 4 to 0 when I'm trying to deal with both hands at the same time. You better die, holy shit. I swear, okay, oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, the ruby bolts. Oh my god, back to back ruby bolts, boys. 
We're getting it. We're doing this. It's working. It's working. It's working. I need that blowpipe hit though, for real. Honestly, I'm gonna think about blowpiping now. Ha <laughs> ha This is actually insane. Oh my god. Yo, we did it! That wasn't even that bad. Uh, I, I honestly, oh, dude, I, my hands are so sweaty though, okay. It wasn't that easy either, dude, but. Oh, Jesus, that was so sweaty. Holy shit, did I get anything good? 16 rune ores, bro. 334 planes, let's get it. After doing the first ult, I realized fairly quickly that my biggest weakness is, of course, stamina. And a lot of it came down to the fact that I splashed a lot on the Mei Chan. Luckily for me, I do have an equipment that it wasn't part of the phase one, but I did end up completing it because of Blue Scrolls, which is the Book of Darkness. That bad boy got 10 magic accuracy. It's a shield slot. It's light. And it comes with fire prayer. So I have found a decent second rate to attempt. It's got Tecton, Skeletal Mystics, Crab Room, Vanguards, Fossa, Thieving Room, and Shamans. So the only boss that I'm not exactly sure how we're going to be able to handle is Vanguards. Everything else we've already done on the first rate or they're just really easy anyways. I believe that Vanguards is going to be the key to helping me do no prep raids a bit earlier with this setup because vanguards if you complete the challenge can drop anywhere from two to even up to like six brews and that's huge that will definitely ensure a high chance of no prepping vanguards is definitely the hardest boss outside of ohm to truly master sure you can play it safe and spend like five to ten minutes to kill them without a resetting but to do it uh fast you know within just a few minutes and not resetting them is truly a test of skill. So Vanguards is a tricky beast because you don't want to hit too hard. Because if any of the Vanguards uh, HP difference is over 33%, it will make all the Vanguards reset back to full health. They can easily mob you, which is really, really dangerous for new players. So understanding all the different variations of safe spots in each of the three layouts is super important. But honestly, that just comes with a lot of practice and patience. So there we go. Ah, oh, much better. And I got an overload. Perfect. Okay, that's going to help a lot. Oh shit, that was a major. I killed it. Lol, imagine killing the major with magic. That is such a forehead move, but it worked. It worked. That's all that matters. Yeah, baby. Okay, cool. We did it. Only took like five minutes. Much better with the major book. The switches make it nice. Now to take off my defender in between kills. Oh Jesus. Okay, blowpipes really ass for head face sometimes. Honestly, second one. Yes. Yeah. What the? F I got a purple. <laughs> oh my god! I actually got a purple. Oh my god. No, I actually got a purple. No way. 2k seat. <laughs> Yo, that's where the that's where the point restrictions are coming in. Oh my god, I'm gonna laugh my ass off. Oh my god, dude. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're just gonna open this, dude. We're just gonna open this up. We're not gonna take too long. Oh my god! Okay, we're chilling, dude. This is not a boat. This is not a boat. We're chilling. We can't we can't use this anyways. It's all good. Ancestral hat! Yeah! <laughs> 2kc in and I got a drop already, dude. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my god. Not even bad. Let's uh, go to our little tracking log here. Bam! 2kc, by the way. Alright, so we're gonna make our own tab here for the items that I can't use. So these are the locked items right here. We have the first one. But I will be able to get uh, this item out of this tab once I reach my first 100 KC because I'm definitely very excited to uh, use this. Probably not a rate, but um, surely I can use it out of the places. 